Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Annie Douglas, your Chief Mob Ambassador here at Moms Meet. And I'm so excited that you all could join us for our webinar brought to you by Organic Valley. During this webinar, you'll learn more about grass milk and the health benefits associated with the product. Uh, so let me introduce you to the presenter for today's session, Eric Snowdeal, who is the Milk and Cream Product Manager at Organic Valley. I'm sure you'll have some questions during this presentation, so feel free to type them into the chat window, and we'll take some time at the end to answer all your questions. Uh, so with that said, Eric, please take it away. All right. Thank you, Annie. Um, yes, I'm, I'm, my name is Eric Snowdeal. Uh, I'm with Organic Valley. I'm the, the milk and cream product or brand manager, as they might call it in other places. been with Organic Valley for six years. Excited to talk about uh, this uh, grass milk, which is 100% uh, grass-fed milk, uh, a first uh, in the country, uh, first 100% grass-fed milk from a national organic brand. Um, and I'll talk about how it's different and um, and uh, the product and welcome any and all questions uh, from anyone. So now I got to make sure this is moving. Okay. So first, you know, it's my uh, uh, obligation to talk about why we, uh, as a brand manager, why we uh, know that consumers prefer Organic Valley. And um, I assume everyone here is aware that we're always organic uh, and always have been since 1988. And that means that we never use uh, antibiotics, toxic pesticides, synthetic hormones, or fertilizers, or GMOs. Um, and our pasture, all of our milk is produced from pasture grazing cow. We're pioneers in pasturing and the importance of pasturing and dairy. Uh, and that really uh, provides the foundation for, pro for producing the award-winning uh, organic milk. And you can certainly taste the difference if you've ever had our milk. Um, and certainly, uh, our philosophy and all, the, all of our decisions are based not just on uh, producing the world's best milk, but also uh, taking into account the health and welfare of uh, the animals and uh, how that translates also to the people and the earth. So what is grass milk? Um, you know, at, uh, at Organic Valley, like I said, we've been sort of pioneers in pasturing and helping to set uh, the standard for the amount of pasture that cows uh, need to get in order to meet uh, the organic standard. Um, and uh, But grass milk is a, is a special product in that it's 100% uh, grass-fed. The, the cows are never f uh, fed supplemental grains and uh, soybeans. Um, and uh, the milk comes from a, a special part of the country in Northern California, uh, Northern California's Humboldt County. Um, it's also uh, minimally or lightly processed, meaning it's not homogenized. I get a lot of, uh, there's some, you know, some confusion about, uh, you know, people forget whether homogenization is the same thing as pasteurization. Homogenization is essentially a process where you uh, combine the, the fat in the milk with the rest of the milk in order to uh, make it so that it, uh, the cream doesn't rise to the top. And this is how the vast majority of milk is, is processed. But um, you know, a, a certain type of consumer is looking for less processed milk. They like the cream on top. They like to scoop it out and put it on berries or, or do whatever. And so this is when, when you uh, allow that cream to come to the top, it's uh, not homogenized. And it's also not ultra-pasteurized. So the different kinds of ways that you pasteurize milk, uh, and that's the process where you heat it uh, to, um, uh, uh, to improve the shelf life uh, of the product. And so grass milk is uh, heated uh, to a lower temperature uh, for, a shorter, uh, for a little bit longer time than other milks that we produce. And again, this fits in with uh, the the concept of being a, a bit less processed. Um, so, and as I said, so homogenization is the process of breaking down the fat, uh, and grass milk is not homogenized, and the type of pasteurization, if anyone wants to dig into the details, is called HTSD. And most organic milk is uh, pasteurized um, in, a, in a different way, but uh, we can get into details if anyone wants to about that during the question period. The important part is, though, that um, for people that are looking for 100% grass-fed products, 
this grass milk is uh, for you. So the cows are not fed any any supplemental grains at all, and this uh, is a little unusual. This is unusual for um, dairy cows uh, because uh, it's actually difficult it's, uh, to get a, a lactating cow the amount of energy she needs year-round uh, just based off of grass and pasture. So um, even in organics, uh, you, grain is normally part of what's fed to cows. You can certainly do 100% grass-fed, but it just takes a lot of uh, time and um, care on the farmer's part to build up the soils and get the cows the right nutrition so they're getting what they need to produce the milk that they need, uh, the milk that you enjoy, sorry. So, and you know, the 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 big deal about this really is the taste, uh, I think, for the most part. I mean, it's, it really is a different tasting um, product if you've ever had it uh, or are going to sample it. So it's um, it's got a little bit of a, a creamier flavor, a little bit due to the fact that it's not homogenized, but it's a little yellower uh, due to the beta carotenes that are in the grass. Um, and if you've ever had a pasture butter, you'll know that cows that eat uh, exclusively or majority of their diet as grass, the, the milk that they produce is a little yellower naturally. Uh, and the, the milk has a unique flavor that's sort of um, uh, representative of Humboldt County in a way, in that there's tastes of vanilla and earthiness that are, that are unique to that area um, uh, that translate to the milk. Um, and so it's great taste and it's good for you. I think most people uh, are aware nowadays that uh, um, the more grass and pasture that uh, dairy and uh, beef animals consume, that that changes the omega-3s that are in the uh, the omega fatty acid profiles that are in the uh, in the milk uh, that they produce, and so that. Uh, more grass means more omega threes, which are good, and less omega sixes, which are which are uh, not as good. We, Americans eat uh, too many, too much omega sixes, and not enough omega threes, and so the ratio in the grass milk of omega six to omega three is um, is about one to one, uh, a little bit over that, which is pretty uh, astonishing. Uh, most foods, on average, in Americans' diet, the ratio is uh, 20 and even 30 to one, uh, meaning we consume way more omega sixes than we do omega threes. Um, of course, the cows love uh, what's in it for the cows. They get to be out eating the way uh, Mother Nature intended, and being out on the grass and out on the pasture. And certainly in Humboldt County, they get a uh, they're in a really special place. Um, so, you know, we, I touched upon this a little bit briefly. We say that grass milk is the only 100% grass-fed milk uh, produced by a national brand. There are some smaller regional labels, um, uh, you know, around if you're lucky, uh, you can maybe find them. Um, it's, uh, like I said, it's difficult to produce, to, to get the energy uh, that the cow needs. Um, year round uh, on a um, everywhere, and so it tends to be you'll find people who are super dedicated uh, to 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 grazing and being 100% grass fed that have done the work in terms of building their soil and building the different kind of pastures that uh, give the cows exactly what they need around the year, and so. Um, it's uh, just difficult to do that for the rest of the milk, and, and as I've said, we've been pioneers in pasture and setting the the base level for how much pasture cows need for for dairying um, uh, for the rest of our milk. But um, it's difficult to do 100% grass-fed uh, nationwide for all the milk. Impossible, mostly. Uh, so, like I said, the t the difference is uh, in the taste. There are um, it's it's fun to watch people taste it, especially um, people who are uh, you know have are used to tasting different wines and um, that sort of thing. And that uh, um, really does have sort of a more herbally herbal note uh, uh, with a the flower petal and a little mineral. It finishes off with a little bit of mineral notes and. Um, it does actually, the flavor does change uh, over the course of the year, too, depending on the type of pasture and uh, in the mix of grasses that they're eating. And so it's pretty, it's, it's neat to have, to have a product that is uh, seasonal and changes uh, uh, even month to month and week, sometimes week to week over the summer. 
So who's behind our 100% grass-fed milk? We've got some great uh, three farms in Humboldt County uh, in uh, Northern California. Um, one of them here is the Regley family. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, great folks on a great farm. And, um, you know, the, the other aspects to the grass milk that are, that are um, unique or, or, or nice parts of the product is that, uh, you know, pastured cows produce less methane, uh, and that's related to the amount of uh, corn that they're eating. Um, grassland is, uh, you know, phrase that the, the sustainability folks like to use is it's a terrific carbon sink, meaning that it soaks up carbon in the atmosphere can help with global warming. Uh, and uh, and when cows feed themselves, uh, you know, they're out uh, fertilizing the fields themselves, and the farmers uh, uh, don't have to use as much fuel driving equipment around to fertilize the fields. Um, and uh, as, again, like I mentioned earlier, the really neat thing about the grass milk is uh, there's a fancy word in the, in the cheese, uh, in, the, in the wine world primarily, and a little bit in the cheese world of the terroir, the sense of place of the food. Uh, and grass milk really has that sense of place. Um, and in fact, if you go out there, there's some unique elements to the soil in Humboldt County uh, that lead the milk to have a little bit of a vanilla uh, flavor. And I know there are other there are other companies that specifically go out uh, to Humboldt County to get milk to make ice cream with uh, vanilla ice cream because it helps. Uh, it just really boosts uh, that sort of the natural vanilla uh, um, uh, flavor. And so, um, you know, if we produce the grass milk in other areas, which we certainly would like to, we'll, it'll, it'll have a, a different sense of place uh, based on the where else, wherever else we choose to produce it. So uh, that's it. I've got about, that's about 20 minutes. Um, uh, there's a beautiful shot of the cows and uh, at one of the farms in in uh, Humboldt County, um, and we'll we'll have stay on the slide showing how you can contact us at uh, Organic Valley www.organicvalley.coop. Find us on Facebook and uh, and you can always give us a call. So now I can take some questions. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Eric. Uh, great presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, we are getting a lot of our good questions from. Uh, everyone attending, so I'll go ahead and get it started. Um, so we have a few uh, people wondering about the, the variety of grass milk that you offer. Um, could you just uh, talk a little bit more about the, uh, the kinds of grass milk um, varieties that you offer, and is, it, is there a lactose-free version? Um, is there a chocolate flavor, like you have different flavors? Could you talk a little oh, bit great. more about that? Yeah, great question. So right now, um, in, in we launched the product um, last uh, April. We have three fat levels of what we'll call plain milk. So there's whole, two percent, and skim. Um, and uh, some I always sometimes get a, a furrowed brow at uh, producing skim milk that's uh, not homogenized, but it we sell a bunch of it, and it's. Um, because normally when people think about homogenization, they think about the fat on top, and they say, well, skim doesn't have any fat. But it, um, um, to, again, people like the 100% grass-fed part of it, and they still like the fact that it's minimally processed uh, and not homogenized. So we got three fat levels, uh, and we are always evaluating um, whether or not to do lactose-free. I, I, part of my other, you know, the rest of my job, we, I, I manage the lactose-free uh, uh, business and the chocolate business and all that stuff, and so we're always looking at opportunities to meet, uh, uh, you know, to produce uh, products for lactose-free consumers because it's certainly a um, uh, a good a, a large amount of people who uh, who like uh, consuming lactose-free products. So we don't produce any any of those now, but the more people who ask for it, the better the odds are that we will do it. Right. In, in and, addition, uh, though, it, it, oops, sorry. In addition to things like uh, we'll look at butter and uh, you know half and half and those sorts of things. Right, right. Yeah, that was actually might going to be my next question. Um, we we have a few moms wondering, you know, do you have are you going to be coming out with any cheeses or butter, or even just from grass milk? So is that kind of in the plans, or are you allowed to share that? Uh, yeah. So I mean, you know, it's. Um, 
I, I want to be careful about sharing any specific timing, but certainly we are very interested in uh, uh, launching cheese uh, and evaluating. Um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the first priority would be looking at when and how we can expand uh, the grass milk to the rest of the country. Right now, it's only we're only selling it on uh, on the West Coast uh, primarily, so it's uh, California, Oregon, uh, Washington. Uh, a little bit of Utah and Colorado, um, so we want to get make get grass milk to the rest of the country and look at other products. Um, and you know, uh, certainly cheese is on the list of things that we're evaluating. Okay, great, great. Um, we have uh, one uh, really good question about uh, from someone who is saying that she has a friend that drinks raw milk, but then she heard that it can be unsafe. You know, because it's not pasteurized. So um, how does this compare to raw milk, and is the non-pasteurization of the grass milk a safety concern for anyone? Uh, right. So grass milk is still, is still pasteurized. Um, it's just it's pasteurized uh, in a way that's a, um, that the way that it's pasteurized is, uh, boy, less intensive. So it gives it a, it has a shorter shelf life. Um, so grass milk has, uh, about 20 is 21 days of shelf life from the date that you produce it, and that's different than other milks that are heated to a higher temperature, uh, and then you get um, you can get as much as 70 days of uh, of shelf life on those milks from the date of production, and each has its own uh, benefits and uh, and um, and other things. Uh, so I mean, many people like the ultra pasteurization it's called because they can buy a half gallon of milk at the supermarket and. Uh, put it in their fridge, and if they don't get to it, they've got more than uh, three or four days to drink it. Uh, normally, with the with the uh, pasteurization, the way grass milk is pasteurized, you've, you're going to by the time you get it to the store, you're going to have you know uh, three, four, five days uh, bef before it uh, reaches the end of the little code that's printed on the on the label. But it is still definitely pasteurized. It just has the um, the only difference is how long uh, the shelf life is, uh, and certainly there are um, safety concerns with uh, raw milk, and um, a lot of people assume that raw milk is that what they're actually looking for is the 100% grass-fed, and there's the assumption a lot of times that raw that the people are producing raw milk it, it is 100% grass-fed. Um, and that may be the case in sometimes, and in many cases, it's probably not the case that the raw milk is 100% grass-fed. So certainly, in an area uh, like California, where raw milk is, um, is is legal to sell on the shelf, which is not the case in in many areas of the country, um, I've talked to a lot of people who have uh, switched to the grass milk because they were looking for 100% grass-fed, and they found out the raw milk wasn't 100% grass-fed, and it gives them a little bit of peace of mind to know that it's uh, minimally pasteurized. Right. right. Well. Okay, great. Yeah, that's, that's a great answer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so for those who have, you know, uh, you know babies, maybe like one-year-old uh, babies who are kind of switching over, you know, from you know, formula or breast milk into just regular, you know, dairy milk. Um, do you have any advice on, or any thoughts on how um, maybe grass milk or, or like dairy, you know, milk might be a better option um, than maybe you know something like almond or rice milk? Or how how does it compare? Do you can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Well, boy, um, <laughs> you know, for the yeah, for. Uh, you know, possibly a bit biased as the milk uh, product manager, but certainly um, milk is uh, is uh, an, an inherently uh, nutritious uh, beverage. We know there's a lot of uh, research done around it being a great uh, you know source of uh, protein and calcium and um, and uh, vitamin D, and there's lots of other minerals and um, that you get out of uh, that you get from cow's milk that makes it uh, you know, largely recommended by uh, pediatricians uh, as you transition um, uh, kids, uh, uh, young toddlers. Um, certainly, if there are you know lactose uh, tolerance issues, then uh, lactose-free milk might be uh, might be an option. Um, but uh, you know, milk is uh, uh, widely regarded as a great nutritious uh, uh, beverage and um, 
grass milk is. Uh, we, I've talked to lots of moms. Uh, I went on a retail tour uh, and met lots of moms, and they and we you know we'd get the I got some great pictures of people who had that was the grass milk was the first milk that they'd given their uh, kids after they uh, after the, uh, after they transitioned, uh, and that their kids loved it, they, they just fit into their philosophy of having less processed and 100% grass-fed, uh, and um, being a little bit closer to uh, the the uh, where the food is coming from is a great option for them. Okay, great, great, thank you. Um, and uh, you know, could you kind of just talk about um, you know you were saying that there is a slight taste of a hint of vanilla. Um, mm -hmm. Because of, uh, of the the uh, pastures, um, so will that you know for the different batches of milk? Um, do you find that maybe some batch batches would taste a little bit different than, than another? Yeah, there is. Um, I mean, there. Uh, I am not a uh, let's see. I'm not a I'm not a super duper taster. You know, we have people in the we have people in our. R and D, uh, you know, in our, in our quality, who taste every batch of milk, and they say, "Oh yes, this milk tastes. Uh, it's got a little bit more of this and a little bit less of that." Um, and so I find I can taste the variations, the seasonal variations. So when the when it's coming into spring and the pastures really have a uh, there's a different mix of plants and and flowers. You know, pastures more than just um, you know lawn grass. There's a lot of other things growing uh, in the pastures, and so as that as that spring pasture, I can definitely taste the difference in the milk. Then moving into uh, summer and fall, and then even uh, in the winter when they're eating more of uh, what the hay and uh, stored grasses, so then they move into dried grasses and eating a little bit less uh, fresh pasture in Humboldt County in November and December. That all it's more of the seasonal variations. Um, I I don't necessarily detect a week to week. Uh, Difference, um, although some people could. I don't know if that's a, a great answer, but uh, mm -hmm. certainly um, you can taste overall to the difference. You're, you're, the the grass milk has a has a unique flavor throughout the year. Um, that you know, again, because of the vanillas and the earthiness, um, it's gonna it'll it'll taste different. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks for answering that. Um, and you know we, we are getting a few uh, questions um, about the really yeah, the main difference between grass milk and organic milk. Um, obviously, you know organic you guys produce both regular organic milk and grass milk. Mm -hmm. And you did you know talk about how there's you know that that cream on top and and the uh, difference in, in the flavor. Um, but but is there any are there any other major differences in terms of you know maybe like health kind of benefits or you know is there anything else that you could um, you know talk more about on the difference between the two? Yeah, so I mean the, the main difference is is really just the amount and the degree of uh, pasture that the that the cows that that the cows are uh, getting. So as our, our the rest of our milk, like I said, Organic Valley has been uh, pioneers in setting uh, in uh, what's known as the pasture rule. So in order to even be organic milk, you have to get a certain percentage of the cow's diet it has to be from grass, uh, has to be from fresh pasture, and so. Uh, you know, I could talk for hours just about that, but it's basically 30% of the cow's diet has to be from fresh pasture, and then you, um, you know, more of the cow's diet can be, you know, maybe 60% of the cow's diet is from pasture and grasses and hay, basically not grains, and so that's where we're at as a as a cooperative. Um, you know, maybe on average around the year, 70, you know, 60 to 70 percent of the cow's diet is grass, pasture, not grain, um, and then the rest is is grain. And so, grass milk is unique in that uh, that other than through saying the 30 percent of the cow's diet is that was grain is now um, grass and pasture, and so um, and then that translates certainly to uh, an improved um, uh, uh, omega-3 profile. So that's the main. The, 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 aside from the taste uh, and the flavor, then the more grass and pasture a cow gets, uh, the higher the omega-3s and the less the omega-6s. So organic milk is still uh, has a, a a great 
omega-6 to omega-3 profile, so it's um, maybe on average uh, 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 compared, compared to conventional milk, which is 8 or 9 to 1. Uh, hopefully, I'm not boring anyone with numbers. Uh, but and then grass <laughs> grass milk is grass milk is is even better yet. Okay, great, great. And you know, just for the moms out there who you know uh, might you know be wondering, you know, could you kind of give us, um, in your opinion, you know, what is the um, you know what's the most convincing reason why someone would should switch from just the regular milk, non-organic milk? To, to using organic or you know, grass-fed milk, um, you know, what are some of the the best reasons you know for switching over? Well, if you're talking about switching from non-organic to organic, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think the 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 main. Uh, well, first is the I mean, there's the taste. I don't know if you. I, I often get um, uh, you know I'll, I'll go meet people at various stores and they'll come up to me and say. It, it, genuinely, and I'm not saying this as a marketing person, your milk is the best milk I've ever had, uh, ever. And so, and that's really, um, you know, a lot of people are used to thinking of, oh, milk is milk. Uh, but, you know, it really does how the cows are treated and they're, you know, treated humanely and not, uh, I try not to disparage conventional milk production, but most conventional milk is produced from cows that are sitting in barns uh, eating uh, corn soy. Um, and so how you make the milk and cows out eating the way that, there's, that nature intended translates into just a better tasting product, I think. Um, and if you've never had our milk, you should try it because it tastes great. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, so, you know, you're, you're going to love it, the kids are going to love it. And then, uh, you know, without a doubt, um, not using pesticides, not using uh, antibiotics on the cows, um, uh, not using uh, synthetic uh, growth hormones, all of those things that are part of conventional milk production, you know, knowing that the product was produced without those is, um, you know, a, 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 huge, a huge thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And then, and then certainly beyond that, so then we're talking about grass milk. Um, so that's just maybe why you should think about organic milk as opposed to conventional milk. And then grass milk is really for those people. Um, you know, there's there's uh, you know many people who are concerned about the amount of corn uh, and soy and grain uh, that are being fed to the animals that produce their food. And so uh, certainly in in the in the on the meat side, people are really uh, many people are aware of. Well, yeah, I want to look for grass-fed beef, uh, and then they, then they, as they go down that journey, they say, "Oh, right, I want actually want 100% grass-fed beef. I don't actually just want grass-fed because that could mean that they're they are getting a portion of their diet from corn or soy." And the same thing happens with milk. Um, so right. just because the milk says grass-fed doesn't necessarily mean that it's 100% grass-fed. And so right. the grass milk is really for that for you know for the consumer who's looking for that, and it's it's an important part of uh, of you know, they're, they're buying decisions. Right, right. And, and you're saying it's really important to, you know, when you're shopping for milk, just to make sure you're, you're picking up 100% organic, 100% grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, I don't want to, we could, I could, I could, I, all these things they talk for hours on, but there really is um, grass-fed in dairy, not to get too hung up on the details of, of packaging uh, labeling requirements, but there's no... Um, regulatory or legal framework for saying grass-fed on dairy specifically. So, um, so it's essentially what the fancy word is, it's an unregulated claim. So you can put uh, grass-fed on a milk carton and basically it means it doesn't really mean anything. Uh, and so that cow could be put grass-fed on the front and have a picture of a cow in the grass. Uh, that cow could be getting 40, 50, 60 percent of the diet could be corn or soy. Um, so if you're drinking something that you think is grass-fed, I you know really encourage you to go and uh, to call the customer support line and say, hey, how much how much corn and soy is are your cows getting on average throughout the year? And um, okay. yes, if you want to guarantee that it's 100% grass-fed, uh, you really should be looking for 100% grass-fed. Right, right. Okay, great. Thank you. That's that's a really great tip. Um, you know, we have uh, some uh, of our moms who are on the line are wondering about, um, you know, how many cows or, you know, on average, how many farms are designated for um, grass milk production? 
Uh, right now, we have three farms in uh, in the in the Humboldt County that are producing the grass milk. And uh, to be honest, I don't know the exact number of cows on each farm. It's a, or, or average. It's in the. It's it's. Uh, I think it's probably in the hundred, hundred or so. Okay. Which is which? Yeah. Which is. I mean, Organic Valley as a as a cooperative, we average. I think it's like seventy cows per farm, which is uh, tremendously different than a conventional uh, large scale dairy operation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. And um, you know it. So we have uh, a lot of our models are wondering, you know, obviously it, it takes much more work to produce this milk, and um, so what is the price difference between your grass milk and, and the, the organic milk that you guys have? Uh, yeah, you know, it depends a little bit on the region and the retailer and all kinds of uh, uh, obscure uh, <laughs> things sometimes, but on average it's about a dollar more um, than our other organic valley milk. Mm -hmm. Okay, and obviously the shorter shelf life, you know, means that you know there could be you know um, uh, products that go to waste if you don't get to it you know quick enough. So, um, mm -hmm. do you uh, recommend you know maybe freezing the milk? Is that okay to do with the grass milk, or can you um, you know if you want to you know use it in baking or something like that? I mean, is it is it pretty much like any milk? And can you easily substitute? Yeah, it for yeah, that? it's it's, pre it's pretty much like any milk. You can use it uh, in any any way that you're uh, any way that you're going to use other milks. And we've had we've we've definitely had people who who baked it and uh, and um, uh, baked with it and cooked with it. Uh, and you can um, it's it's neat. I've actually I've talked with chefs who. Uh, specifically, um, cook with dairy uh, made from 100% grass-fed products, and are and when you can bring out the uh, tastes and flavors that are in the milk. It's a little, little more so with the butter, so we might be excited to do it with butter. But you can do it with milk too. It can really add a you know a, a unique aspect to your cooking. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, we have uh, one person wondering about um, you know Organic Valley, you know the company, you know, and I guess the production of the grass milk um, does it meet you know, all the federal safety and you know health guidelines? Oh yes, of course. Anything anything we produce uh, will meet uh, all federal uh, health and safety um, guidelines. And um, you know, on top of all of the, uh, you know, dairy is a, is a is a really regulated industry, and uh, organic dairy possibly even more so because we have so many so many other um, things that we're tracking to meet the organic standards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. And uh, for those who. Um, who may have joined us a little bit later um, in this uh, session? Could you just clarify, you know, where the availability, you know, of grass milk, where um, you know moms can find that? So right now we are selling um, we're selling grass milk in uh, Washington, Oregon, California, a little bit of Utah, uh, and Colorado, and um, we are actively uh, looking to expand uh, through the rest of the country. The more people who call up our consumer uh, hotline at 888-444-6455 uh, and ask for grass milk or go to our website uh, at www.organicfamily.coop uh, and ask for it, um, you know, the the, the more times we hear that, um, you know, it certainly helps my case to, um, uh, to to build the rationale for selling it in the rest of the country. And you can go to Facebook and ask for it there, too. Great. Great. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we have a, a few more questions here. Um, do, you, um, do you add anything like vitamins or anything like that, any, anything like that added to the milk? Uh, no. Well, um, okay, so i got to correct that. So we add, uh, the, the, by, it's a government regulation that milks, uh, reduced fat milk, so anything that's not whole milk, has to have uh, vitamin uh, A and D added to it. So any, any milk you buy anywhere, uh, if it's 2% or skim or 1%, uh, has to have vitamin A and D added to it. So we add vitamin A and D uh, to, the, to the 2% and the skim milks that we, that we produce. Uh, unusually, uh, we do not add vitamins to the whole milk. 
Um, and that is, uh, it's in part because, um, you know, a lot of the people, uh, the, the folks who are looking for non-homogenized, 100% grass-fed are also um, not necessarily interested in um, added vitamins. Uh, they want it, they, you know, they like to can eat foods that, they get the vitamins from uh, other places, uh, naturally, the foods that they eat. And so, um, so the whole milk doesn't have vitamins added to it. Okay. okay. And uh, we have some questions about the packaging. Now, what kind of packaging does the milk come in? And is the packaging made in the United States? Uh, the packaging is made in the United States. It's made in, I don't know if I can back up here, it's, it comes in this, uh, like almost all of our, uh, or actually all of our milk, it's in the, this, it's called half gallon paperboard. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, packaging is made in the United States, printed in the United States. Okay, great, great. And um, we have some questions about you know, food allergies, and obviously you know, we have a lot of moms who have you know, kids with sensitivities with food allergies and intolerances. And do, you, do you find that maybe um, going with um, grass milk you know, is maybe a better option, or there's less kind of um, chances of you know, being sensitive to that? Well, I'm not. I can understand. I'm not a doctor, and uh, we haven't done any studies. I do know when I'm out. Uh, I have talked to folks when I'm out um, in stores, uh, talking to people who've had the grass milk, and looking at our consumer comments. Um, it's actually one of the reasons why people choose 100% grass-fed is because they f they feel like that the, the corn and soy. Um, more corn and soy uh, in that's that uh, that that translates to more in more uh, intolerance, and so they choose 100% grass fed because they feel like it's more tolerable for them. And I've talked to people who say, who have told me, "Hey, I stopped drinking milk 10 years ago um, because I had issues with it, and I tried lactose free, and it wasn't really for me because um, uh, I don't think and I don't think it was a lactose, but now I'm back to drinking." You know, you're 100% grass-fed, and uh, and I don't have any issues with it. Yeah. Well, that you know, is that is that for everyone? I don't know, uh, but I, I'd actually love to hear uh, if people uh, if if um, it does work better for them. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah, um, that that's great to to hear that. You know, obviously, mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone should you know at least willing to give it a shot so that you know yeah. can see kind of how it works for for them. Um, yep. So we have uh, one person who was saying that you know she noticed on one of your slides you know you said that the supplements were given to some of the cows to help out with lactation. Um, could you just clarify that a little bit more? Uh, yeah, so they are um, the cows are uh, are monitored, um, like I said, very very closely uh, by our vet veterinary staff. Um, I, I sort of alluded to it that it's difficult to do this in a way to get to get cows the, the amount of energy and the nutrition that they need throughout the year in a way that's healthy and humane for them. So we actually have, uh, again, this is I, I think this is unique to Organic Valley, uh, a, a, a multiple uh, veterinary staff that go out and check the cows and make sure that uh, make make sure that they're healthy going into winter when it's even in Humboldt County uh, gets colder and you need more energy and that sort of thing um, and so as part of their diet they are fed uh, they can get uh, supplemental minerals um, and uh, I, things like mag magnesium and uh, maybe potassium and some other things that help uh, with their energy and metabolism um, and then they also are it is a, it is part of uh, our uh, how we talk about 100% grass fed is if they do need um, a little bit of supplemental energy we call it uh, they can also get um, a little bit of molasses which um, uh, you know to help uh, boost their energy Great, great. And here's another question. I'm not sure if, if you will have the answer to this, but we have one person asking if you, um, and I'm not familiar with these, so maybe I'm, I might not be pronouncing it properly, but do you add tarragine or vitamin palmate A? Uh, yeah, no, so carrageenan, I believe, is what the, the question is, and that's um, uh, an emulsifier that is used in some, in some products uh, in the dairy industry and, and other products other places. Uh, it helps keep uh, uh, foods 
mixed together, I guess, maybe is the best way to put it. Uh, so you used a lot of times the chocolate milk or eggnogs to help to keep the eggnog from separating. But we, if that's the word that I, I think you're trying to say, uh, or you know, how, if, how it got translated, that's uh, no carrageenan. Is the short version. No carrageenan in the milks, and I think that there the other one was uh, vitamin A uh, palmitate. And um, no, whether the whole milk does not have vitamins added to it, um, and again we're required by law to add vitamins to uh, the skim and one percent, or skim and two percent. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So we just have a couple more questions, and we're going to wrap wrap things up. Um, we have one uh, mom who uh, is pregnant, so she just wanted to make sure that you know, non homogenized milk is safe for pregnancy and you know, even you know really young children. Uh, and she's also just wondering, you know, if there might be any bacterial or E. coli concerns associated with grass milk. So could you just talk a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, no, so first off, homogenization is uh, completely safe. Uh, it just has to do with, uh, it has, it has uh, homo homogenization has to do with the cream on top, basically. Mm -hmm. And so okay. there's no, uh, it's less processed and there's, um, it's not related in any way to uh, bacteria in the milk or shelf life or other kinds of things. It's just, a, um, and it's the way that all milk used to be. Uh, uh, used to be, um, and before we started homogenizing it, because you know um, folks didn't like to shake up the milk before they uh, poured on their cereal. Um, so yes, it's uh, homogen. It's not homogenized and uh, and and perfectly safe. Uh, and there's no um, uh, yes, there's no in the, no increased uh, risk of uh, bacteria or illness or infections or anything uh, from being 100% grass fed. Uh, and in fact, you you when you look at it, um, you know uh, the cows are healthier uh, when they're out in grass and uh, in pastures and exercising um, and not uh, you know sitting in um, a barn uh, uh, all day long and not getting exercise. Um, and so you you tend to see. Uh, less uh, trouble uh, that could lead to uh, infections um, and mm -hmm. you know potential problems with your milk. But again, that's that's uh, really um, an unusual to find in in pasteurized dairy. Those are the kinds of issues that you would get in, uh, into with raw milk. Anyway, that's okay. not pasteurized. Okay, great, great. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, clarifying that. Um, so, what, just one more question, and then uh, we're going to wrap it up. Um, Okay. So we, we have a, a mom wondering if there's any chance that these will be, you know, coming in a single syrup container for lunch boxes. Do you have any plans mm. for something like that? You know, that's um, uh, I, I, uh, not to be too cagey in my answer, but anything we don't have any immediate plans. That's the non cagey okay. answer. Uh, we really <laughs> just want to we want to get the um, uh, just again expands. Uh, we'd like to get the half gallons out to uh, the rest of the country and look at other uh, products that we can do, like cheese and uh, whatnot. And I think that um, certainly, if enough people ask for it, uh, we since we already produce uh, single serves, um, that um, it'd be something that we'd be happy to entertain if we if we, right. if we if we had enough people ask. Right. Right. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much. You know, for this great presentation and. Um, answering all these uh, great questions. There is a lot of information here, and I know that uh, some of the moms who are participating in sampling this with their, their mom's meat groups, um, I, I know that they'll bring all this information back to their members, and um, you know, hopefully they'll have a really great sampling meeting. Um, so thank you so much again, Eric. And do you have any you know, last thoughts that you'd like to share before we uh, sign off? No, uh, just, um, you know, I hope uh, everyone who, uh, you know, can get a chance to sample it. And um, I don't want to give anything away, but, you, you know, look for it uh, on the shelves maybe in other parts of the country sometime relatively soon. Uh, and I had a great time, and, I, and all your questions were, were great. Great. Thank you. Well, mom ambassadors participating in the sampling, we're looking forward to hearing your feedback and your members' feedback. And, um, 
after this webinar ends, and uh, we'll be selecting uh, the lucky uh, winners of the giveaway. So uh, look at your email, watch out for the email uh, for those uh, who have won the prize. Uh, so with that said, I hope uh, everyone uh, has a great rest of the day. And uh, uh, thank you, Eric, again. Uh, and we'll be signing off now. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye.